What's up, YTPC? Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I was recently in the brick and mortar, in my local brick and mortar, and uh, discovered they had a, uh, a little pamphlet called the Freshman Pipe Smoker's Guide. And so I thought today we would do a little different video than you are used to seeing from me. Uh, since I am a freshman myself, and uh, walk through the guide, which, um, again, you're going to hear a lot of this stuff on, on other YouTube channels, so I'm not really going to tell you anything new. Uh, if you've been watching any of those videos for any length of time, uh, I know if you're like me, when you first got into pipe smoking, that was the first thing you did was go to YouTube and say, hey, I don't know how to smoke a pipe. What do I do? And so you started looking up how to smoke a pipe. Well, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not any different. Um, as some of you would say, the housekeeping of the day, we have Gowith and Hogarth Bob's Chocolate Flake. This one came from uh, Boswell's when they had some uh, in supply. So I got the bulk flake from them uh, a couple months ago. And we are smoking that in the unfinished Savinelli, which is coloring very, very nicely. Um, I have no idea what number it is. I understand most Savinelli's are supposed to have a number. Um, this one does not have a number on the on the stem. It just has a little Savinelli stamp and Italy. So if you know what the number is for this bad boy, let me know. Um, I'm curious. It's not going to change anything. I'm curious. Great, great tobacco. Oh, I love the G&H line. Pretty much everything that has Goweth in it, I like. In fact, I like it so much, the brick and mortar had a whole bunch of it. And uh, I may have snatched up a couple tins. Save that for a different video. This video is about... Freshman Pipe Smoker's Guide. As you can see, I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So anybody else out there in the Colorado Springs area, look me up. Let's uh, get together, smoke a bowl. All right. Nice thing is it's a short one. Freshman Pipe Smoker's Guide. The Essentials for Beginning Your Pipe Adventure. A pipe. Check. Matches or fire. I always have matches around and a lighter. Tobacco. Check. Pipe tool. Check. Pipe cleaners. Hmm. Yeah, I got pipe cleaners in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, additional pipe accessories. Tobacco pouch. I actually have one of those. A uh, pipe bag. A couple of my pipes have come in bags. Um, my favorite bag that I've got, I got two. I got his pipe, uh, which has a nice bag. And then I also have a Bones, a Morgan Bones pipe that has a nice bag. Pipe book. <clears throat> it's on order. That'll be in a future video also. Cork pipe knocker for the ashtray. Don't have that. Um... I haven't really seen that it's that necessary, but I do have a wine cork around here somewhere, and I was thinking I might affix it to my ashtray. Uh, pipe lighter, which I just showed you. Tobacco jar, which you obviously just saw with the uh, Bob's chocolate is in a jar. Ashtray. I'm a little redneck. I got a whole uh, trash can for my ashes, which is really helpful because then I can throw the open... Um, tin foils and, and um, uh, used pipe cleaners and whatever else in there, uh, used matches, uh, works out really well. Pouch button, no idea what that is. Pipe stand, I'm actually working on a pipe stand. Um, right now, all I've got is my trusty little pipe couch. Ain't that cute.
pouch button. I don't know what that is. Uh, let me know. Uh, and additional pipes. I've got some additional pipes. Um, I've got a lot of corn cob pipes. Uh, they smoke really, really well. All right, let's get into it. Pipe smoking technique number one the initial light. The initial light is called a char light and is intended to get things started by applying heat, which relaxes the tobacco, causing it to rise in the bowl. Take the time to get a good light and then take your tamper and flatten this rise without repacking the tobacco. And so you're literally just gonna kind of hold it like that and just let gravity do its work. That's it. All right, step two, ready to smoke. Light your pipe again and enjoy. Nice, easy draws repeated at a leisurely pace is a trick. <clears throat> While smoking, you should be able to hold your pipe against your cheek at any time without burning yourself. Most importantly, don't forget to retamp the ash down occasionally and don't dump this ash out. It serves a purpose. Now, we can come back to that, but once you get to like halfway down in the bowl, you might have to get rid of some of that ash because you may have just too too thick of a uh, a layer of ash to actually get a real good light on your tobacco. But you only do it before half a bowl. With proper tamping, you will get a cooler, drier smoke. The cap you form will create an oven effect, which will pre-cook the remaining tobacco, and your pipe will stay lit longer. After the smoke. When finished, take the spoon part of your tamper and remove whatever remaining tobacco there is. Don't ever bang your pipe against anything. Boy, I've seen a lot of people do that. Don't do that because you could break it. These things aren't cheap. I mean, the Missouri missions are cheap, but they're good smokers. Why would you want to risk breaking your pipe? So, you remove all the tobacco that is left over and ashes, and then you run a dry pipe cleaner through the stem until clean. Don't ever take a warm pipe apart as you run a good chance of breaking the stem. Wait at least half an hour and be careful. I would wait an hour. Uh, to finish the job, fold the cleaner in half and wipe the inside of the bowl. That's it. All right, so in a nutshell, that is pipe smoking. Uh, there's a little bit more here. Uh, routine maintenance. A clean pipe is essential for a pleasurable smoking experience. Occasionally, depending on the type of tobacco smoked, you should clean your pipe using a pipe sweetening solution. And you can look into that. I, I'm assuming that's going to be either salt bath or maybe you're using um, a higher alcohol content alcohol. Remove the pipe stem from the bowl and then run a wet cleaner through the stem and mortise and the air hole followed by a dry pipe cleaner. So yeah, probably just dip it in Everclear or vodka or rum, whatever your, uh, your alcohol of choice is. Additional maintenance. Polish stems and briar bowls with special polishes made for each and check the thickness of the cake buildup. Cake should not be thicker than a dime. That's good to know, I didn't know that. Use a pipe reamer to shave excess cake, but not a pocket knife. I would imagine that your cake buildup is going to be pretty slow if you're using the, uh, the pipe cleaner to wipe out your bowl. All right, some pipe veteran advice. Rotate your pipes. Don't smoke the same one each time. Most veteran pipe smokers have at least three or four pipes. Not every tobacco smokes the same. Different tobaccos have many variables, including moisture, cuts, blends, etc. Each tobacco you try may require a different smoking technique. Also may require a different pipe. Um, the large bold uh, pipes do really good with the Englishes. Um, cobs are generally really good for arrows. 
because um, they get a lot of goop and, and everything, all the goop, all the, the moisture in the arrows drops to the bottom below the draw hole. So you're not actually having to deal with any of that moisture in the pipe, whereas if a pipe has the draw hole down at the bottom of the bowl, if there's moisture in there and the condensation from the smoking process, you might get gurgles. Uh, moisture, I've literally flipped this over and seen the juices just drip out. Obviously, that was a very wet smoke. And I might be a wet smoker too, I don't know. Um, no, if your stem breaks, don't throw the pipe away. Now, this is a little plug for my tobacconist. They say, bring the pipe to us, and we can send it in to get a new stem made. Bottom line is, I would imagine that you can pretty much refurb or repair almost any pipe. Obviously, if you burn it out, you can't. Um, but uh, that's it. And then there's a little bit of a diagram on the back that gives you the anatomy of a pipe stem. and the anatomy of a pipe bowl. So when you hear somebody say, oh, the heel of the pipe or the, the mortise of the shank, like, what are you talking about? I'm not a woodworker. I have no idea what you're talking about. Now you know, you've got this right here. Hit the like button, bookmark this uh, video, and then you can always come back here to the very end of the video and see what the uh, different terms of the stem and the bowl are. So anyways, that has been your Freshman Pipe Smoker's Guide to Pipe Tobacco Smoking. Appreciate you watching the video. If you liked it, hit the like button. And uh, even if you didn't like it, no, I'm kidding. Um, but also, hit a subscribe button for me. Let me know that you're out there, that you're watching, that you want to see more of my videos. Uh, that's how I know that uh, my content uh, has been interesting enough to you to, to want you to come back and see more. So I appreciate you watching. Happy piping. Stay safe out there. Thanks.